let's talk about how to get split tones. So a few years ago, I did a really general video on split tones. It was just an overview of the embouchure and fingerings required to get those notes to really light up. So I wanted to do a more in-depth video this time that gets into the nitty gritty of it a little bit more. We're still gonna talk about the fingerings and the embouchure placement, but some people have still had struggles getting those notes to light up. And there's a lot of reasons that that could be. So we're gonna go over a few of those things today. So let's start by talking about what a split tone is and what a split tone is not. A split tone is a multiphonic that happens in the altissimo range of the instrument generally. You can get splits to happen in other places on the uh, instrument as well, but generally the altissimo is where they work the best and where you would want to use them. Now a multiphonic is when you play one note but many notes come out. And so we get these multiphonics to happen in the altissimo when we blow harder on the reed, thus creating it to distort. And then we also have to add a little more pressure uh, with our embouchure on the heart of the reed uh, to maintain that. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to keep the split going. So if I just play a high F sharp here and I just use a normal amount of pressure and I, I'm just trying to create a normal F sharp, it would sound like this. And then if I want to distort that or create a split tone, I'm gonna to blow harder and create more pressure with my embouchure. And you get that growling intense sound on that note. As opposed to. Now you may have just heard me say that when you get a good split tone, it's an intense growling sound. Now we don't wanna confuse that with an actual growl. A growl is a different technique on the saxophone than a split tone. So a lot of people think that in the altissimo when you're playing splits that you're just growling, but you're not. Growling is when you hum and blow at the same time. So on this A right here, if I hum and blow, so basically like that, I get that sound. And that's not a multiphonic, I'm just creating a hum. You're hearing my voice and you're hearing the pitch coming out at the same time. Okay, if I wanted to split that note, and they're hard to split down out of the altissimo, but if you can hear that, I'm getting more than one note happening at the same time that is not produced by my vocal cords. Now, most people don't use growls up in the altissimo because they don't sound as good. If I were to growl on a high F, you get that sound. But if I'm gonna split it, you get a much more intense sound with a multiphonic, and that's usually what people are going for. So now we know exactly what that split tone is, and we kind of know how to achieve it by blowing extra hard to distort the reed with a little extra embouchure strength on the heart of the reed. Um, but sometimes that doesn't work for everybody. They're, not, they're still not able to get the split, and there's a lot of reasons that this could happen. One is there's a balance between how hard you blow and how firm the embouchure is, and you sort of have to figure that out. If I play that normal F sharp again, and I gradually increase the air and the embouchure strength, I start getting that to split. Now, if I increase more air, but not enough embouchure strength, I can't get it to split. So my embouchure is actually relaxing a little bit as the air goes through, so I'm not able to get that to happen. If I increase the lip strength too much without enough air speed, I'm gonna get it to jump up to either another uh, harmonic or it's just gonna chirp on me. So the trick is finding that perfect balance between air speed and strength on the heart of the reed. I also feel like my lip is rolling forward slightly. And this is something that people do when they're trying to get good low notes sometimes. It's also a really good thing when you're trying to get high notes. You feel like your jaw and your lip are moving slightly forward and that's gonna give a little bit of extra pressure on the heart of the reed. And I may have tilted the horn down just a little bit too to help aid that. I'm just doing little things to help me get the right amount of pressure on the reed for the amount of airspeed that I'm using so I get the right amount of distortion. So if you're able to play well in the altissimo and you're getting a sound that you like up there, but you're still not able to get the splits, the next place to look is the reed and mouthpiece combination. Now this could be the mouthpiece itself that's making it harder 
or the reed that's making it harder, or it could be the way that the mouthpiece and that reed pair together. So let's talk about the mouthpiece first. If the mouthpiece has a larger chamber, or if the reed is stiffer than it should be for that mouthpiece, the split will be much harder to get. Now let's think about this. If the, if the chamber is large, it takes more air already to get in there, and so it's gonna be harder to overblow the reed. And if the reed is too hard, we need to put extra pressure on the reed to help get that reed to distort. That again takes more energy here, so it's just a lot harder. So most people that are trying to split are using medium to small chamber mouthpieces. So the next thing that might inhibit you from getting these split tones is the reed. Now the reed is important for two reasons. One, it has to be the right strength. And if the reed is too weak, you're gonna to struggle to get the split at all. And if it's too strong, you're gonna be working way too hard and it's gonna be difficult to get it consistently with that intense growl that we're looking for. And something to keep in mind is, the more open the tip is on the mouthpiece that you're playing, the weaker the reed needs to be. And the smaller the tip opening is on the mouthpiece, the stronger the reed needs to be. And that again is just an issue of uh, imparting energy to the reed to get it to vibrate. Um, we're tr always trying to find that, that sweet spot, that, that combination between tip opening and reed strength that makes everything work. And that's when the, the split tones are gonna light up, is when that uh, matches the best. And you may find that there's subtle variation, even if, like let's say you use a two and a half reed and you're playing on a seven tip. Um, that might work for you, in one brand of reed but not another brand of reed because that brand is a little bit stronger or a little bit weaker because every brand's strengths vary a little bit. You also may find that one reed doesn't split well in the same brand but another one does and that's because there's variation within two and a halfs within the same brand. And so always having a good reed tool around to help make uh, adjustments in your reeds so that they're all working right is always a great idea especially when you're trying to do something uh, like split tones, which is a very technical and refined technique on the saxophone that you know requires equipment to be working perfectly to achieve really well. And then the last thing with reeds is they have to pair to the mouthpiece well. And with that reed tool, it's always a good idea to take some time and flatten the back of that reed. We want that reed to pair up against the table of the reed nice and flat, so there, it's a perfect mesh. And sometimes there'll be defects in the mouthpiece where the table isn't flat, and no matter how much you work on the reed, you can never get a good pairing. A lot of people play on mouthpieces with poor tables, and they go through their lives for a long time being able to play pretty well, but there's certain things they can't do, and they've never traced it back to that reed and mouthpiece pairing. They just assume that the table's flat, and a lot of times they're not. So you wanna go with a quality maker that is good at getting those tables nice and flat and can produce a consistent product. Now for split toning in the Altissimo, the most important thing that has to be set up properly is the position of the front F key. And that's that little key up above uh, your first finger. And when I press that key, it opens up the palm F, and that's why we call it the front F, because I'm manipulating the palm F, but I'm using the key on the front. Now, what we want to do is if I, if I play my palm F and I open that, it opens up half an inch, but if I play the front F, it's opening up maybe only 60% of what it was when I was playing the palm F. And that's because this Palm F acts as an octave key when you're playing certain notes in the altissimo, especially notes that uh, will split. And, and this octave key, or this, this Palm F, um, is one of the reasons that you get that multiphonic on a lot of those notes. So that's a very important key to have set up properly, and a lot of people have it adjusted so that it's opening way too far when you press the front F. Uh, and it's a tricky thing because if you don't have it opening enough, then you choke off the sound of your front F and your front E. So it's finding that perfect balance between having a strong front E and front F, uh, but also not opening so far that you can get a really solid altissimo and get those really solid splits. So with all that, now let's get to the fingerings. Now you can split almost any fingering in the altissimo, but some will be very difficult, some won't be consistent, and certain fingerings will allow you to get a split very consistently. And that's what we want. We want one that you can depend on. So if you want a dependable split, there are only four or five up in the Altissimo that are probably gonna work. 
And let's start with the high F. Now you can split a palm F, but we're not gonna do that one. We're gonna split the front F, which is the front F key plus your two finger. And the reason we're using this fingering is because it provides a more intense growl. You can hear that multiphonic in there. But I can get it even more intense if I add my third finger to that and then I add the side B flat. And that's a really intense growling F. That's one of my favorite to play. So the next one is the F sharp. And the high F sharp is played uh, with front F two and side B flat. So basically we're just lifting up that third finger from the high F, so now we're high F sharp. And that's a really good like growling F sharp. Now you can do that again with the palm key if you have a high F sharp key you can get a split F sharp. Uh, but again, it doesn't sound as good as using the front F. Again, another reason why we want that front F key to be adjusted properly. Really great David Sanborn style growling split F sharp. The next one up is the high G. And this one we're gonna finger what we call the split fingering. So on the left hand one three and on the right hand one three. We're not playing the front F here. We're just playing one three and then one three. And then to get up to the G sharp, we will use basically the same fingering. So one three on the left, one three on the right and the side C key, which is this middle side key. So all of those and so there's really only one more note up in that range that you can split with any kind of consistency. And that's what we want. We want to be able to split a note and have it be reliable and to have it happen on command without having to think about it. When you're under pressure needing to play, you don't want to have to be thinking about whether this is going to work or not. And so this high A has to be fingered a really special way to make that happen. And the way we're going to finger it is one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're going to add the side C. So all six fingers down like you're playing middle D and then add that side C, which again is the middle side key. You might be thinking, ah, that's a weird fingering for A, and it is because we would normally either just finger that two and three or two, three, four, five, six were the most common ways to finger an altissimo A. And they work, and you can actually split those two, but they usually aren't consistent. You can't hang on to them long. They're a little bit unstable. So we're finding the most consistent, stable, high A possible. So there you have it. That's the technique and the fingerings for achieving really consistent split tones. They're really fun and used in the right place. They can actually be really effective. So practice, have fun annoying your friends because when you play split tones, you probably will be. And if you have a comment, drop it down below.